Hi, I'm Joan Foster and I'm lead of the Manhood Peninsula Action Group and I'm running a series of interviews uh, talking to people concerned about the proposed housing development along the Manhood Peninsula and the rest of the south of Chichester. Uh, and I'm doing these for Stand Up for Chichester and you can see them on YouTube. Now today we're going to talk about actually what is a critical subject which is sewage and I'm delighted that uh, David McLean who's a resident of North Mundham and has a strong interest in the sewage infrastructure, how it's delivered by Southern Water, um, is going to be able to tell us what the issues are that we should be thinking about. Um, I understand that there are three wastewater treatment works serving the south of Chichester, which are Appledram, Pagham and Siddlesham. And so, for example, Hunston North Mundham sewage goes to Pagham. And we know in Pagham there are plans for many more houses. So that's already a problem. So, David, perhaps you could tell us why we are so concerned. Yes. So water treatment works uh, for the peninsula are all getting towards their maximum capacity in terms of inflow from uh, the current housing numbers. And this is a long outstanding issue. There are some areas where the sewage infrastructure has for some years been uh, overfaced by the, the quantity of, of flow particularly after uh, heavy rainfall events. And this is something that um, the Southern Water uh, annual maintenance uh, has fallen short of being able to cope with. The uh, CDC focus uh, recently has, has certainly been on uh, into interviewing Southern Water and getting Southern Water's input into the local plan review process. But of course, that is for the future, that is for looking at housing developments yet to come and has not really focused on the shortfall that many manhood residents have been experiencing with their sewage delivery uh, over the last few years. So there is an imbalance here uh, in some ways between um, what how CDC are handling the situation in terms of the local plan review, which is of course extremely important, and the sewage infrastructure for that is a critical issue. But I feel that there has been uh, a, to some degree, um, a neglect of the current issues that people are experiencing, uh, which as I say have been long outstanding uh, and that Southern Water have, have notably failed to, uh, to get to grips with. Okay, so what you're saying is that at present, the uh, treatment works are not coping and that there are discharges um, of sewage we know into Chichester Harbour and that with heavy rainfall and particularly with the increase in heavy rainfall and storm surges, there's more impact on the ability of the drainage systems to cope. Is that right? Yes. Under normal uh, conditions, um, when the weather is, is moderate, uh, all of the plants are able to cope with the standard uh, quantity of sewage. Uh, the inflow, it's called, uh, in, into their treatment plants. In heavy rainfall events, uh, there is a significant increase in flow due to water leaking into the sewage infrastructure uh, and each of the plants under those circumstances uh, does have a fallback option which is allowed. Uh, this, this is not an illegal operation. Um, they are allowed to overflow which means they bypass the water treatment works and the raw sewage diluted with uh, a lot of rainwater is then allowed to uh, bypass the water treatment works and go straight into the rifes and the harbour, Chichester Harbour, uh, on the peninsula. 
And storm surges are something slightly different. That is more to do with tides. That doesn't yet uh, affect the water treatment works. Okay, so it's the heavy rainfall, and we all know through this last winter, we've had an awful lot of that. And I believe the numbers for the discharges uh, into Chichester Harbour over a hundred days in the last year or something of raw sewage? Yes, and, and that number of days does seem to be increasing. Here we are, of course, at, at, at the mercy of the climate change um, debate and facts. Yes, we do seem to be having an increasing number of heavy rainfall events. And each time that occurs, um, there is uh, an overflow from one or more um, plants into the harbour. Those events, as I say, do tend to be diluted. Some of the outflows from uh, the water treatment works are in fact um, treated by uh, ultraviolet light um, to kill the bugs, but not all. So those storm flow events are allowable within uh, the permit regulations from the Environment Agency. The critical problem is the number of events and the effect that's having on water quality, particularly in, the, in Chichester Harbour, which is uh, overseen very closely, but also Pagham Harbour uh, has the outflow from the Pagham treatment works. Um, because that harbour is not used for any human activities, it is rather less closely monitored. And that is a, uh, another subject which needs looking into. Um, the critical feature here is that the outflow from the four treatment works, some goes directly into Chichester Harbour, like the Apple Dram. Uh, some, like Siddlesham, uh, goes straight out to sea and some like Pagham goes into Pagham Harbour. And all of these flows uh, go, you, often these flows go through the rifes, i.e. the little rivers on the, on the peninsula. And it is the rifes uh, that are taking uh, this flow, uh, which is diluted by the other water in the rife, but which uh, the content of the nitrogen and phosphates uh, is beginning to reach, we think, beginning to reach critical levels. Because certainly um, I was at a presentation from Natural England uh, talking about Chichester Harbour um, and it 90% uh, unsatisfactory and 80% of that 90% declining in quality, uh, salt marshes and all of that. And if we have not only the the sewage that goes into the rifes to get there, there's damage on the way down to the environment, and then there will be damage within both the harbours. And I'm aware, you know, Pagham Harbour, it's not used like Chichester Harbour is for sailing and swimming and everything, but it is a protected site for bird life as an RSPB site, isn't it? Yes, and Pagham is, in some ways, I would say Pagham is a, a a more interesting site from a, a natural environmental point of view because it has so little human activity there. Uh, however, Chichester Harbour has rather more um, scientific features and special areas of interest um, and therefore comes under rather uh, closer scrutiny. Okay, now one thing I'm aware of is Southern Water has not had a very good history um, recently and has been subject to a huge fine and I've just had my new water bill and it's still reduced um, because of their problems in the past and I also know that in terms of producing a local plan that uh, Southern Water is statutorily obliged to say yes we can do whatever you want to meet your housing need but the reality is that that doesn't happen and I, is there a major infrastructure problem for Southern Water itself that needs to be dealt with? Yes, there's a, there's a historical problem where the infrastructure today cannot meet the, the current loadings, um, particularly under heavy rainfall events. And then there is 
a critical future issue with the number of houses that CDC are being invited to, uh, to deliver, which means that uh, there is going to have to be a significant increase in water treatment work capacity in the whole Chichester area and not least on the peninsula, depending on how many houses are allocated. Well, we're going to divide this interview into two parts because it's quite long. And in the first part, I think we've covered, you know, what is the problem? And now in the second part, uh, we're going to go and look at, well, is there a solution? or isn't there?